Hi, everybody. Welcome to our Ask Me Anything webinar with myself and the Jackrabbit team. So I'm just going to give everybody just a couple moments to get in so they can click on join the room and so that we don't get started with all the good meaty stuff before everybody has a chance to get in. So while you are getting settled, like I just said, this is our AMA, Ask Me Anything. Uh, but today in this Ask Me Anything, it's for our ePay experts. So if you think you're gonna pop on and ask me what I have for breakfast or what show I watched last night, you will not get those answers. But who knows, maybe at the end I might even uh, tell you. Uh, if you have to hop off, no worries at all. You will be able to get a link to watch this back on demand. And then just a couple of other quick little things. If you are a current Jackrabbit user and you have any sort of business-minded questions, make sure to check out the Jackrabbit Facebook users group. And that is where you can get things from your peers and uh, anything pretty much related to building your business. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So for those of you that have not met me yet, my name is Marie Baldwin and I am the content creator and training specialist here at Jackrabbit. And I've been with Jackrabbit for almost four years. It'll be four years this March. I have no idea where the last four years have gone. And uh, I'm currently uh, in Canada, actually, just outside of Vancouver. And so today we are joined by Jan and Linda. We were scheduled to have Paula with us, but she's not feeling the best today. So we gave her a pass and we're just going to stick all of our great questions to Jan and Linda. So go ahead, Jan. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Jan Nielsen. I am um, the lead e-payment specialist for our e-payments team. I have been here um, just over nine years now, and I am a West Coast bunny. So if any of you West Coasters are out there in the evenings, I'm the one answering your questions. Awesome. Okay, Linda. Linda's my bunny twin, sort of. So go ahead, Linda. I'm Linda Petrie. And Marie and I started with Jackrabbit on the same day. So we've both been here almost four years. About in March, it'll be two years that I've been on the e-payments team also. So I'm half time on support, half time on e-pay. And I live just north of Charlotte, North Carolina in the United States. So um, yeah, we're excited about doing this. Yeah, me too. I've been wanting to do something like this for a little bit. Usually my webinars are more database driven so this is kind of fun so before we get rolling right along i have a poll for all of you so i want to know i'm just gonna it's going to pop up there for you so i just want to know if you are currently using e-payments in jackrabbit so i know we have some people that are just checking out jackrabbit to become a client and i know we have some people that are current clients that are not using e-payments and that we also have some clients that are using e-payments but decided to come on to just get some more information so you can go ahead and just answer that for us awesome okay so that is all pretty much across the board great thank you guys so we just one second okay so let's just guys back it up a little bit let's just kind of start like right at the beginning so when we're talking about having integrated e-payments within jackrabbit jan can you explain to everybody exactly what it is that we're talking about absolutely so your integrated e-payments is the ability to process credit card debit cards and bank draft transactions directly in jackrabbit you don't need to touch individual family accounts to do this. You can process what we call an e-batch to collect all the payments at one time. This is usually referred to as auto pay, but parents can also initiate payments from the parent portal if you allow them to do so. Awesome, thank you. And just so uh, all of our attendees know, if you have any uh, other questions as well, just put them up there in the chat and I'll be checking that back and forth as our e-payment ladies are talking all about e-payments. So guys, now that we understand like what integrated e-payments are, um, how about you guys tell us like just some of the benefits, like why would a Jackrabbit client want to uh, have e-payments? I'll take that one. Um, first thing is you save time and money. 
So what currently can take you hours or days can now be done in minutes. Instead of processing it somewhere and recording it in Jackrabbit, you do it all at once. You process the payments and they automatically record on the payments, the parents transaction page. Um, you can even schedule a day time for your e-payments to be processed now with our new e-pay auto automation. The second reason would be assurance. You've got assurance of late, less late or non-payments when you use auto pay. Parents love it and it keeps your accounts receivable list to a minimum. And I have a couple more for you. So okay. e-payments with Jackrabbit is safe. In 2022, contactless payments are more important than ever and preferred for safety reasons whenever possible. But this also allows you to collect payments even when you cannot be open for face-to-face -face business. And also it's secure. We are PCI compliant and all credit and debit cards that are entered are safely vaulted with the gateway, which means those credit card numbers are nowhere in your database or in Jackrabbit software. Awesome, thank you. So Jan, why don't you tell everybody exactly like what is it that is required on their end, like what they have to do to get started with e-payments and Jackrabbit? Sure, so what you'll need is a gateway and a merchant processing account through one of Jackrabbit's e-payment partners. And those are CNH Financial and Safe Safe Payments. And you can find those that contact information in your database under the gear icon, go to setup and then e-payments wizard. When you click on that, the next page it will take you to is their information and how to get a hold of them. Awesome, yes. And just as well too, uh, if anybody wants more information and you are in the database, if you click on the question mark icon, when that comes up, you'll actually have a direct link in that top line for all of your e-payment resources. So that's another way people can um, get access to anything. So when it once they have e-payments set up, like can any user, like can a staff person process e-payments, any user, like what's the kind of tightness around that for clients? That's a really good question. So once you have it set up, and part of your setup actually is assigning who can do what in regards to e-payments. So you may have your office managers wanting to do everything, which includes refunds, voids, update family accounts, and process e-payments, or you may have some front desk people that all you want them to do is to be able to take the card and process a payment. So that is part of the setup process and all of your users will be listed and you just check off which ones um, you want each user to do or if you don't okay. want them to do it at all. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so we have a question from Jody. Thank you, Jody. Jody says, credit card fees hurt our small nonprofit. How can we adjust the price to cover the cost of credit card fees? Linda, you wanna tackle that one? Oh uh, yeah, I get that. I'm in support, so I get chats about this. Um, can I put processing fees on so my parents pay what I have to pay? So right now, there is not an automatic way to apply e-payments processing fees directly to the family accounts when you process e-payments. It's actually not even legal in a lot of states. If you feel it's necessary to recoup it, then um, we recommend that you include the processing fees portion in your annual registration fee. But, you know, before you consider doing that, you may want to consider how much time is saved by actually using e-payments that can now be applied to other areas of your business. So you're saving a lot of time, like I said earlier, by doing that. Yeah, that just made me think of a quote, but I can't remember, like, Pennywise something smart. Pennywise yeah. pound foolish. That's it. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> that's well, that's an old that's an old one. Now I'm showing my age. <laughs> Well, like the one thing I remember somebody said to me one time, like a long, long time ago, is that the only thing in life you can't get back is time. So, oh, yeah. That's what true. I said. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing you can't get back. Everything else you can. Uh, okay, so Maureen has a question or more well, question slash statement. So I don't know which one of you guys want to tackle this one. It says, it would be helpful if we could choose between process amount or entire balance. Will that be an option at some point? And then below that, somebody else chimed in and said, yes, we would love to be able to process an outstanding amount, but leave current open. So I think maybe only process certain fees is what you guys are asking. I can address that. So <clears throat> Jackrabbit can process partial amounts based on certain criteria, like transaction types 
or category ones or even specific classes. So when you choose what you're going to process, it doesn't always have to take the full balance. For instance, a, a very common one is you collect registration um, fees. You put them on when they enroll and you want to collect that money to hold their spot, but you don't want to process their tuition until they actually start taking their classes. So you can go in and select a transaction type of registration only, and the only accounts that'll be pulled up are those with a registration fee that is owed, and then process those. So there are a lot of different ways to filter what is being collected. Yes. and. If you guys still are not like totally sure on that, uh, at the end, I'm gonna have a little pop-up where you guys can schedule a call. And then uh, one of the girls can kind of go through that with you even. Um, and then just to back it up a little bit for uh, early, she just wanted to know, Linda, can you just repeat the bit about the legal restrictions, the charging processing fees to customers? She said, even if it's just in the chat, but you can go ahead. Can you just repeat that for her? Yeah, I was just typing that in. So there's not a way that you could process e-payment fees. So you just can't do it. Um, the system doesn't have the capability to do it for one. And the reason is because it's not legal in a lot of states. And we just can't keep up with all the tax um, and different state regulations about when you're allowed to pass along convenience fees, service charges, and all that. So um, we recommend going and checking on your state rules. And then once you've done that, then, you know, if you need to put a fee on your parents, um, you'll just have to figure out a way just to go in and just post a miscellaneous fee to parents that are using e-payments. Um, there's not a way to do it percentage-wise. Um, you know, just, I would say put it in our ideas portal if there's something that Jackrabbit doesn't do. Um, always suggest it because our product team does look at that. And you know, there may be a way to do it one day. Right now, there's not. So um, I hope that helps. Awesome. Okay. And uh, before we move on, just because this goes back to the previous question, uh, Maureen says, uh, yes, thank you. But there are times that I want to run the entire balance, but I don't have that option. And I'm not in ePay. I'm in support <laughs> once a week. But I remember when we were getting trained, less is more and more is less. So if you select nothing when you go to process, you, you're getting all, right? That is correct. If you Three just points. say preview payments and process, you're going to get anybody who has a credit card on file with an e-payment method of credit card and a balance. That'll get all everything they owe you. Awesome. Okay. Let me just skip back here. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, oh, somebody's asking about where can we see a list of the decline codes? I never thought of that. I'll answer that one. We don't really keep a list. And the reason is just there's so many that every day there's probably a new one that pops up. Decline codes either are coming because of your processing errors or they're coming back from the credit card banks that you're, the cardholders are using and they send them to us. Um, they change. We're very familiar with a lot of the meetings and most declines. If there is something that comes up that we don't know what it is, we can reach out to the gateways quickly to help determine the meaning. For the ones that are a bit more unique, we can help you resolve it. If it's a 200 something, that's usually something coming from the credit card, cardholders bank. Um, 300 is a processing error. Just There's different meanings for different cards. So it's just instead of just giving you one list and having you say that's it, we are more than happy if you ever have a question about what a decline code is. Um, you know, chat in, send a ticket, email the e-payments team, set up a call. Um, sending a ticket is probably easier than doing a call because we can answer that pretty quickly or find out for you. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, too, you guys have to go look into a different system, so it might take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. We there. have something here from Christian. It says, we started Jackrabbit halfway through our season. Can you help me with setting it up that when they log in, they have to add a credit card to their account. So that's under their e-payment settings, correct? Uh, yes. <clears throat> so when you go through to originally do your setups, there is a question that says, online registration, do you require a credit card? And you have the option of saying yes. Um, if you say no, then they won't be required to put it in. And if you, they won't even be, and I'm not even sure they'll be able to. If you say optional, then they can or they don't have to. 
but you just want to say yes. And then you can do the same thing from the parent portal side. If you have existing families out there and now they're enrolling in classes through the portal, you can also require that they provide a card at that point before they enroll. Right. And to just so in case we have people on here that have been clients for a while, I'm, I'm guess I'm going to say like a year ago, the require payment. So in order to say if somebody is enrolling in a class, you can actually have it set up that their spot is not secure in their class until they have actually processed their credit card through the parent portal. So kind of, I always think of it like, just because I put something in my shopping cart in Amazon, Amazon is not shipping it to me until I give them my credit card information. Yep. Okay. Um, oh, this is a good one. Am I able to use the card swiper or can uh, my clients tap? That's so you, you, that is a good question. And you can use a card swiper with Jackrabbit. It's a simple card swiper. It just plugs into a USB port. It's not a terminal or anything like that. Um, currently, we do not have the ability to use any tap devices with Jackrabbit. That may change in the future. Um, but today, you can use the USB um, encrypted card swiper. Awesome. OK, let's see. I've got another one here. Um, I already have a merchant processor. Can I use the same one? So I think they mean like they already have like a different processor other than right. what they have to do it with. So can they use the same one? Do you want to tackle that, Jan? Yeah. So basically, no. Um, if you want to have integrated payments, you'll need to use one of our e-payment partners, CNH or Safe Save Payments. Um, the, I just want to add in there that you know the rates can appear to be lower when. Um, with the merchant that you already have, but both of our e-payment partners offer a meter beat effective rate pricing. So assuming that it's a legitimate offer, not Uncle Joe's cousins only, um, then they should be able to meet the price that you have with your current processor. And then you'll have that benefit of being able to do everything integrated and not have to retype in payments every time you want to process. Awesome. And I think that kind of covers to some, uh, there was a question for, and I am already processing with one of your e-payment partners, but I think my rates are kind of high. Is there anything that I can do? Absolutely. Go to CNH or Safe Safe, whomever you're with, and ask them for a rate review. And this is something you should try and do annually because your business has changed over the years. If you mm -hmm. have a larger business than you had before and are processing more, then very likely your rates could go down. Um, but they'll review what you've got and um, do their very best to give you a better deal. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, let's see. One here from Jackie. Uh, if you have multiple locations, do you need multiple settlements? Who wants to take that one on? Um, I can do that. So if you have multiple locations in separate databases, um, you can still fund to the same bank account if you want to. Um, if you have multiple locations in a single database and want to fund to separate um, accounts, you can do that as well, bank accounts. You can do that as well. The key is by family location. The funds will go to whatever family location is assigned to each family. So if you have three families in location A and two in location B, that's where their money will go yeah. to accordingly. You cannot do it based on transaction type or classes. Awesome. Okay. And Hope then that makes sense. it makes sense to me. So good. <laughs> so I think it will make sense to everybody that's in attendance. Um, okay. This one, actually, I may be answering. Um, it says, we have families who have plans. Is there any plans to implement the process leader automation and do it for a single family? Technically, you could. You could, you could right? You can't have, can you? to give that. Well, because the, the process automation, the process e payments automation, it goes on whatever setting you choose. So if you're saying it's for like an e payment schedule and you have an e payment schedule set up for the Baldwin family. Yeah. You create e-payment sure. schedule called Baldwin, and then you run the Baldwin family every day or whatever you want. 
Yeah, I don't know if I'd just do it for a single family. Why? Well, I, I don't know if I would do that. Usually, when people set up e-payment schedules, they do it for groups like the first, of families. The 15th. Yeah, like that's what, that's what I would recommend. I, I'm, I'm more about less work. Yeah, I don't know if I'd do it. You could, you could, but I don't know why you, you would. Do it, but you, yeah, you would have to have that. <laughs> and uh, so, early with that, um, I'm actually going to take note of your question and make sure I address that, and I'll demo it in my process later webinar that is happening next Wednesday. Um, and then, okay, just let's hear Maureen's got uh, piggy, piggyback on the question about the credit card on file. Some have cards on file that are expired or invalid. How can we control that? Linda? I'll do that one. So there's this thing called injury reports called the family e-payment listing. And if you go there and run, I wish I had my database to show you. Um, you go and run that report and you can set it to look at credit cards and you can have it to say those that are expiring soon. It'll look at anything that's already expired as well as those that are expiring at the end of this month. So you can kind of get a heads up for the ones that are coming at the end of this next month and email those families. There's a little, that little check mark at the end. You can check the box to email the families that, hey, I noticed your credit cards are expiring at the end of the month. So um, you can go ahead and update that whenever you get your new card from the bank. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll show that. Too. I'll make a note and I'll show that next week. Uh, okay. In that webinar yeah. that we're doing. Okay, how about this one here? Should I have a specific policy relating to everything e-payments? Um, we would say so. You, you need a specific payment policy that includes everything that has to do with collecting payments. It should include yeah. when your payments are due, your refund policy, very important, your late fee policy, etc. cetera. Um, and just most importantly, you need to obtain permission to charge their credit card method on file, your payment method. So yeah, don't just do it. Make sure you have it that they allow you to, to process because parents want to pay in the portal. But I always say if you have the card, it's easier for you just to process the payments for the parents. And as a parent, I would appreciate not having to worry about going in the portal. So make sure you have all that in writing. They would read to it. Awesome. <laughs> Jan, I can see your face. <laughs> <laughs> Was it a funny face? It's like, even look they all know that we work from home. It is all good. Sorry, I didn't know I was making a funny one. Everybody, everyone that's on here is part of the Youth Activity Center. So we're, we're used to little people. It's all good. Um, Jackie wants to know, is there a specific difference between the two gateways that are offered? So is there a, what is the difference or is there a difference between uh, C&H and Safe Safe? Well, aside from the fact that they are two very separate companies, um, <laughs> there really isn't any different if you're a west coast organization and you may need support later in the day um cnh does have west coast support where um safe save is located in pennsylvania so they're only around until like 5 5 30 eastern time mm -hmm. so other than that that would be the only and that's just a convenience feature as far as the products that they offer they both offer pretty much the same thing. So if you're looking for quotes, call both of them and see which one you like better. Maybe it's just a personality thing that ends up saying, this is the way I want to go. Um, but check them both out. Awesome. Thank you. So I don't see any more questions, but we did get a lot of good ones. So I'll just give everybody a moment if, oh, you're welcome, Jackie. Uh, if anybody has any last minute questions that they want to ask, uh, Jan or Linda, I don't see anything coming in. I don't want to like cut it off because I know I noticed that we had some people that came in kind of late. So if you guys want to just kind of even scroll up through the chat and see. Yes, Kim, it actually will be. We are sending out an email tomorrow and uh, you'll be able to watch everything back again. So no worries about coming in late. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Amber's keeping it real. It will be Friday. <laughs> I thought today was Thursday. Sorry. Yeah. So Amber will be sending out an email on Friday with the uh, link to the recording. And let me just double check a couple of quick things here. So like I had said there at the beginning, if you need to schedule a call with the ePay team, if you want to, you can just click right on that little pop-up that came up there for you. And 
That's okay. fine. Okay. Uh, don't worry about the poll, Jackie. It's fine. Um, yes, yeah, so if you want to schedule a call with them, you can go ahead and click on that. Even if you just have questions about your setup, if you're a multi location and you're thinking about even getting like multi location uh, e payments, you can go ahead and finish that. Oh, awesome. Uh, Kim just said, I just finished uploading uh, 177 classes and 700 students. Gosh, I love <laughs> to hear that. <laughs> she says, now I'm ready to get these e-payments set up where, yeah, it is a big deal to transition your software, but it, we've got you, no worries. So click on that. And then as well, like I had mentioned next Wednesday, we do have a, another webinar coming up and this one, it is all about the automation of your billing process. So I'm going to go over your, uh, discount settings, but then I'm also going to go into your automation of posting later and then as well as processing later. And I'll make sure to touch on uh, Ellie's question about uh, processing just only for one family, like kind of how you can do that. So you guys can all go ahead and click on and get registered for that if you are not already there. And oh, just one sec. Now, Christian, I said in the beginning, you can ask me anything, but don't only ask me payments. I'm just joking. It says off topic. Are you going to do a call on end of year type processing to help accounts and reporting? There is, I'm so glad Amber's not here. There is a great <laughs> blog for that. Uh, if we don't manage to get that to you quickly in the chat, Christian, I will shoot you an email afterwards for that. And that is it, everybody. Thank you so much for hopping on and joining us. We just wanted to kind of just have a little conversation about e-payment so that everybody kind of has a great understanding of it. And you can see, honestly, just how much time saving it is. Like just thinking back to uh, Amazon, if I wanted to order something and I had to wait to like snail mail them a check and then wait for them to say it a lot longer and a lot more work. So that is it thank you everybody bye ladies thanks for joining bye. thank you for joining bye everyone